in person, yes, for the first time in many months, and also live on YouTube and Facebook. And if you are joining us at 6 p.m. on Channel 15, our morning welcome extends into the evening. We are glad to have you with us. We hope that you will follow along in our service leaflet, which if you are at home, you can find in your emailed newsletter. If you do not get our emails, you can sign up for them at our website, atonementwestfield.org. And on that homepage, you will find a link to today's service leaflet as well. Now, our service is going to begin with the singing of hymn 518. And I have to say that those of us who are in person are in a disadvantage. We can hum along under our breath with our virtual choir. If you are singing at home, feel free to sing at the top of your lungs. So let us begin with the singing of the hymn. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let us pray together. Almighty God, and to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, it has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive him from whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will follow, they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And if you're here in person, please be seated. If you're ho at home, I assume you already are seated. A few decades ago now, <clears throat> I in attended an all-day workshop on Christian formation for teachers, parents, and kids. I went with a friend, and we took some of our kids with us. I don't even really remember which ones. I can't really remember too much of the conference because, you know, we took our kids with us. But, but I do remember that one presenter talked to us about the story that I just read. She told us that studies suggest that the image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd was the one that most little children recognized and gravitated toward. And I thought of the little plaque of the Good Shepherd that had been on my bedroom wall throughout my childhood and was at that moment on my daughter's bedroom wall. The interesting thing the presenter went on to explain was the way that little children could identify themselves with the little sheep on Jesus' shoulder, whether they were living in the city or the country, indeed whether they had even ever seen a sheep. Most kids, at least most kids 30 years ago, easily see themselves as the little lamb. It is a very sweet image, unless you find yourself downwind of a sheep on a hot day. But the truth is that I wonder about this image for those of us who have outgrown childish things. Are we really all children? Is our relationship with Jesus one merely of parent and child? Doesn't that remove our call, the call that Jesus places on us to do the work that God gives us to do? Of course, this image of Jesus the Good Shepherd is only one of many images that Jesus gives us to help us understand how we may make a relationship with God. In the 15th chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus will talk about us as friends. But for today, this is the figure that the church uses to help us know who God is and who we are. Jesus is a strong protector, finding us when we are lost, carrying us when we are weary, caring for us when we are too little or weak or stupid to care for ourselves. It's not always a flattering image, at least to my adult human sense of self. I like to read magazines or novels or even easy biographies before I fall asleep each night. And early last week, looking for something new to read, I happened upon a book that has been on my shelf for decades. Sweet Promised Land was written by Robert Laxalt the year that I was born. I'm guessing that I got it from my mother's bookshelves because it turns out that my parents knew the author 
His son and my brother were a year apart in the same high school, and his older brother was the governor of our state. And for all the familiarity of the outside of the book, and at least a memory of the family connection to the author, I had never even opened it until a couple of nights ago. I guess I was expecting it to be a little history of the state of Nevada where I had lived as a child. But in fact, Sweet Promised Land is the story of a good shepherd, a man who loved and cared for sheep for most of his life. Robert Laxalt's father, Dominic, was taught to care for sheep as a little boy in the Basque Pyrenees, that mountainous section that straddles the border of uh, Spain and France. The Basque people have lived largely in that section of the world for centuries, preserving their own language and culture. At the beginning of the 20th century, young Basques were leaving the hill country to find their fortunes in the wider world. Some moved to French or Spanish cities, where they were discriminated against because of their mostly dark looks, their different language, their lack of education. Others, like Dominic, saved their money and sailed to America, hoping to avoid discrimination and to make their fortune. Dominic ended up in central Nevada and got work on sheep ranches, and there he met and married another Basque immigrant, Teresa, who had trained at the Cordon Bleu in Paris. So she was a cook. They worked for large sheeping operations, working hard and having children. Dominic would be away for weeks at a time tending a flock while Teresa cooked for all the employees on the large ranch and gave birth to six children. But Laxalt was also acquiring his own sheep and property and making some risky business decisions. Even in Nevada, it was the Roaring Twenties. And by those early Roaring Twenties, the Laxalts were a prosperous family headed for disaster. Soon, all of the property that Dominic had amassed was lost when banks began to fail and called their loans. Dominic remembered when it was all over, all that my partners and I could keep was one band of a few thousand sheep. And so it was back up into the hills. Robert Laxalt writes, after that, I think our family spent half of its growing up life looking for my father. He describes one incident when his teenage brother John was driving in supplies for his father and the sheep. He reports one day when the sheep were in the foothill foothills and somewhat hidden by the high sagebrush, John drove right past everything, the bend in the road, the sheep, and the camp. My father, who was resting on his canvas bed after lunch, saw him pass. Laxalt goes on to describe a grueling eight-day search, ending with, my father never said an irritated word to John, even though he had been living on bread crusts and goat's milk for three days, and when his burrow had run away with his bed, had spent one rainy night in a hollow log. See, it isn't just that being a shepherd is hard work. I think we probably all knew that, right? It's lonely work. It's dangerous work. Not many choose it. Laxalt describes the day that he saw his father stare down a mountain lion a mountain lion that he knew had been killing his lambs. He didn't shoot him, he stared him down. And finally the lion slunk away. That story was just in the second chapter. And it was about then that I realized that if Jesus is the good shepherd, then his work of caring for us is more than just carrying us on his shoulders when we are cute little children. A good shepherd has many ways to lay down his life for the sheep. After 47 years in the barren Nevada mountains, Dominic had a medical episode of some kind 
that he related to his family when he came in after a couple of months away. It sounded to his now college-educated children that he had had a stroke. Grateful that he seemed fully recovered, they planned a trip, a trip that he had been putting off for years, a trip to return to his home in the French mountains to visit his surviving family. This was something he had always said he wanted to do, but he never made the reservations. Teresa had decided not to go. She had been an American for too long, she said. The vast Nevada desert and small hotel that she ran in Carson City were home for her. Robert accompanied his father back to the Basque country. And the book is filled with warm and moving anecdotes. But what struck me most was this one. Toward the end of the stories, just a day or two before Dominic decides that his vacation is over, he had thought he was coming home. But now he wanted to return to his real home. Should I tell you that the state song of Nevada is Home Means Nevada? The things you learn in the fourth grade. In this story that I like so much, Dominic tells a nephew about the trouble that could rise up among shepherds and cattle ranchers. Dominic started, it was all open land, hundreds of miles of it in that corner of Nevada. And by the law, you were free to graze your stock in any part of it. But if there was that much free land, which I must confess to you, uncle, I find hard to realize, said the nephew, I cannot understand why there was trouble. Well, the country's not like here, said Dominic, raising his hands a little helplessly. Not like here, where, where land is so rich, you don't ever have to worry about enough feed. There it was nearly all desert land, with sagebrush and a few wild grasses, and where the feed and water were good were the places that the sheepmen and cattlemen both fought about. Now, I was a small child in Nevada, which is why I know the words to the state song. The high desert landscape that Laxalt describes is very familiar to me. And yet, even as a suburban kid, I was really happy to leave Nevada and return to the softer, greener landscape of the East Coast. A few years ago, I visited the Holy Land, and I was surprised to find that where Jesus lived was far more like the high desert of Nevada than it was like New England, or the Pyrenees, or the English Cotswolds, those places that inform so many of the romantic backdrops of images of Jesus the Good Shepherd, where we see sweet green grass and gentle flowing brooks. And maybe in these pictures, maybe there is a danger as threatening as the wolf that Jesus mentions. But even the wolf in my imagination is more like the one from Red Riding Hood than the mountain lion that Dominic Laxalt stared down while his son watched. See, shepherds work in all sorts and conditions. Some conditions are easier than others. But wherever it is that you lay down your life for the sheep becomes your home. Jesus, the good shepherd, is God making a home with us. Whether we live near soft, sweet grass or tough, dry sagebrush, the good shepherd lays down their life for the sheep. But don't make the mistake of thinking that this is just an image for little children or merely a metaphor for hard work. Sometimes it is literal, human beings living lives that can lead to armed confrontations or meeting murderous risk or facing starvation or medical crisis in isolation. 
Wow. If that sounds to you like our current human condition, I don't think it's a coincidence. This image from Holy Scripture speaks directly to our present lives. We have spent a lot of the last 13 years taking a pause, a period of languishing, according to a recent New York Times article. The pandemic has been unpredictable. Remember when we were going to be shut down for two weeks? The upheaval of racial discord took some of us by surprise, even though it is 400 years old. The terror of gun violence continues, and Earth Day last week reminded us that our lack of care for the world in which we live is killing our environment. And here we are today, called to reflect upon what for so many of us has been a child's understanding of God. Where is the good news? Well, here's the thing. While we can learn from the past, we cannot live in the past. Dominic wasn't a shepherd in the abundant Pyrenees. His life was to be a good shepherd in the hard and cold foothills of the Sierra Nevada. Jesus tells us that he is the good shepherd who will lay down his life for us for each and every one of us. Knowing who shepherds are and what makes them good reminds us again of our God who becomes one of us to show us exactly how much we are loved and to let us know that God knows how much good work there is for every human being. Jesus is the good shepherd but we are not sheep. That's where the metaphor breaks down. We belong to God, and we are called to follow the Good Shepherd and to lay down our lives for the good of God's people. Amen. And now I invite you to stand with me as we affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. We give thanks for our pets, remembering especially the long and joyful life of Oro the dog. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. We give thanks especially for Finch Klein Wittenberg, the grandson of Margaret Hannigan and great-grandson of Rita, born this week. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Eleanor Berinsky, recently departed and Sarah Duffy, Liesel and Doris Hebert, for whom the sanctuary lamp burns, that your will for them may be fulfilled. We, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of the sheepfold, whose love is not for hire, who calls to himself the victims of the world, we thank you that Christ laid down his life for us when we could not help ourselves. In the weakness of his love, give us strength to work for peace in the world he came to serve, through Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And I invite you to wave to one another <laughs> and to share Christ's peace. And if you are within the same household, you probably could go so far as to shake each other's hand or give a kiss. So please be seated for a couple of announcements. Well, welcome again to the Episcopal Church of the Atonement here in Westfield, Massachusetts. We're glad that you are joining us in person or online by YouTube, Facebook, or on Channel 15. Now, we have ev several opportunities to get together in person and virtually each week. At 8 a.m. on Sunday, we will offer the Holy Communion with no Eucharist. At 10 a.m. on Sundays, we will be in person and online. That's what you're experiencing right now. So there will be music sung by and recorded by our virtual choir. And by the way, it's not too late to join the virtual choir. We will be singing together virtually for a while longer. So if you want to learn how to do that, send an email to our music director, Scott Bailey. On Wednesdays, we will offer the Holy Eucharist at 12.15 p.m. And that will be in person only. If you wish to attend in person, we do ask you to make a reservation because your making the reservation helps us to have an accurate contact list in case we have the need of contact tracing. But look around you and notice, we have enough space. We haven't even opened the balcony yet. We could easily fit 10 more people with social distance in this space at this time. So, Please do make a reservation, but understand that you can make the reservation as late as a half an hour before the service. If for some reason we have more than 35 people registered, you will get a note saying that there is no more room. 
but I don't anticipate that happening. So please make a reservation just so we know that you're coming. If you can't figure out how to use that Eventbrite online registration thingy, whatever it is, call the church number. We have 24 hour um, voice messaging capability. So you leave a voicemail, we will get it and we will know that you're coming. We have a couple of online only options. So if online is your way to go, there is Children's Chapel at 9 a.m. every Sunday. Coffee hour follows the 10 a.m. service and that is still online. And there is Evensong every uh, Thursday at 6.30 p.m. And these opportunities are offered only on Zoom. To get the Zoom link, once again, go to our website, which is www.atonementwestfield.org. There is, all this information is printed in our weekly newsletter. Now we send that both by email and by print. So if you're getting it one way and you want to get it the other way, talk to us in the church office, we'll make that happen. If you want to sign up for our weekly uh, newsletter but online, go to our website again and there's a link to do that there. Okay, enough of, enough of that. You all know what to do. Um, <clears throat> this week, on Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., we will begin a five-week Bible study on the Zoom platform. This will be led by area clergy. I am one of them, but I'm not the first one. The first session will be this Wednesday evening at 6.30, and leading it will be the former rector of this parish, Rick Bellows. So everyone is invited to join that weekly Zoom, and you will get that information in your weekly newsletter. You see this kind of a circular thing. Um, <laughs> now, if you are noodling around our uh, website, you will also find a button to make a financial contribution. There are other ways to give, too, of course. If you are not yet vaccinated, I urge you to find that shot and bear your arm. Getting vaccinated is the most giving thing that we can do for each other at this moment in our history. Your shot will help other people stay healthy. Please know that every contribution that you make, including what you are able to give today, goes to help this church share the transforming love of Jesus in a broken world. So walk in love as Christ first loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.